Good morning. My name is Angel Rodriguez. I'm the CEO of Compi Group. We are located in Alabama. Uh, we develop cloud-based databases applications for different industries. Today, we are going to talk about how to utilize uh, and navigate Mars 100R. Mars 100R was developed for the aviation industry to track not only configuration, but pretty much the whole uh, maintenance functions uh, applicable to any aircraft. In this case, this database was developed for the helicopter industry, specifically the military. We're going to talk about uh, the different menus that you can see. Uh, we will start with the aircraft flight fleet readiness. We click here and we see the main menu on where you will start searching for your different aircraft in the fleet. We can start with a tail number. Let's say I will pick anyone. I will pick uh, tail number 004, uh, serial number 004, and this is a UH-68. I click on, I click on here and I do my search. When I do my search, I see the aircraft airworthiness condition. In this screen, you can see that we can depict the operational aircraft operational availability AO. In this example, we have uh, 84.62% in airworthiness condition, and we have 15.38 of the fleet ground. We scroll down, we click on the plus sign, and we can see that we have two aircraft that they are grounded, and we have the rest of the fleet that they are in airworthiness condition. We can track the, uh, the previous hours, the hours flown, and the current flight hours. In order to use this table, we click over here on grid edit. We scroll down. And we can adjust the different the, the different flight hours for the different aircraft. Let's say that we have a tail number 008 that flew 2.2 hours today. Well, the current hours before flying was 3.8. We come here. And we say, well, uh, 3.8 is today, 2.2, our song. And we have a total of six flight hours for that particular aircraft. So, we can do the same. We can do the same thing for all the aircraft in the fleet, and uh, and this way we can determine also which aircraft today are in airworthiness condition by clicking over here, and you can see how the the pie chart on the top changes accordingly the way I'm clicking on these, on these buttons. This is basically how this page works. We can, we can move to the right. We have, we're tracking uh, hours 
before overhaul. Next is inspection will be filled over here. The type of inspection in hours. So in this example, we're showing uh, 100 hours inspection here. We can move into the right. We can assign a location to the aircraft where the aircraft is physically located. Make sure that you always click on this column. If the aircraft is part of the fleet, you need to add it by click on this on this column that is is is, is nomenclature says all records. If the aircraft was destroyed, just delete it and you will remove it from view. Now, every time you make any changes to this page, make sure that you are seek the grid by clicking over here. Okay. Now you see that our pie chart changed because we determined that today the whole fleet was airworthy. If I want to make an aircraft grounded, because that's the condition it is, we just check or, or, or uncheck in this column and that will change the pie chart, the pie chart accordingly. Now let's say that I want to download the whole table. I can come here, click on Excel, SML, or CSV, and you will you can manipulate the whole data in an Excel spreadsheet. That's pretty handy sometimes. Sometimes you want to do other things above and beyond what uh, you can do through the database or uh, you can play with the numbers or whatever you want to do in your during your daily operations. You can download anytime a copy of the data and you can manipulate it in your PC. Now, again, keep in mind you need to exit the the grid every time you make any changes. Another section here is the, uh, the details page. The details page is shows, gives you an overview of that particular aircraft. In this case, I'm taking a look at tail number TN001. We can exit the detail page by clicking report, or we can also exit the detail page by clicking the, uh, the back button. We can see all 13 aircraft in this, in this, in this query by clicking on the lower part of the screen. So now let's go to the daily maintenance log. The daily, daily maintenance log allows the maintenance personnel to annotate or keep track of the daily maintenance operations of any particular aircraft. I can click here and I can add new data. In this case, today is Wednesday, the third, the 18, May 22. In order to populate the calendar that we see here, we need to click on add new data. When we click on add new data, 
I want to add the data on today's date on this particular aircraft, tail number 001, uh, tail number 001, or I can also change the tail number if I want to. Now, let's say that today, uh, aircraft was inspected under a 100 hours inspection cycle. That's my note for today. I just click submit. When I click submit, and I take a look at this aircraft, I can see that today the aircraft was inspected on the 100 hours. And we can do the same thing for each individual aircraft. You can keep a daily, a daily log of the uh, maintenance activities that you accomplish on each one of your aircraft in the fleet. We can click on view details. And again, we have an overview. And now we have a note here that says the aircraft was inspected on the 100 hours on this calendar date. Now, over here we have other buttons or menus that we can click on. We want to know how many aircraft I have on the under inspection. 50-50 in this case. We have two aircraft. Tail number 004 and tail number 020. Let me move this out of the way. We have aircraft under on schedule maintenance. We can click on the other on the other uh, the other menu, the other button. Now let's go to fleet configuration. I want to know how, what systems I have installed on each individual aircraft. That's very important for us to understand the systems and components uh, I have installed on any particular aircraft. Well, I go. Um, I'll go. I'll pick anyone over here. In this case, 009. Uh, let's say I want to see the accessories. All the accessories installed on the aircraft by part number and serial number. I just click on accessories, do a search. In the left hand side, you can add a picture of that particular accessory if you want to. By default, you will have the company's logo. If you don't have a picture, but in case you have a picture of that particular component, you can insert it over here. I will show you how to do that. Now, on this tail number, 009, which is the one that I'm doing a query on, I can see the accessories related to that particular airframe. I can click on view details and I have information about that particular component. I have a picture of the component again you can insert 
a picture of the actual component in here if you want to, or you can leave the, uh, the, uh, the, the company's logo. Now, in order to modify this table, we need to click on grid edit. So I can modify the grid. And now you can see that I can add a picture of the component. Uh, let's say, uh, I want to add a picture. I'm looking at my pictures here. That will be my picture. That will be the picture of my component. Now, in this case, once I'm done with it, I just exit. Make sure that you always exit the grid once you make any changes to the grid. I will exit the grid. And now I don't have the company's logo anymore. Now I have my components picture over here. If I want to edit just this component instead of all the components at the same time, I can click on edit over here and I'm, I can update just that particular component. So that's, uh, that's another way of doing this. You can go by click, clicking over here and you can edit the whole grid or you can click each individual record. Again, we can download the data if we want to. We can download the data as an Excel. It downloads as an XML, but you can open XML from your Excel, Microsoft Office Excel application. If you don't have Microsoft Office, Office Excel and you have any other, any other type of uh, spreadsheet uh, application, you can download as a CSV and that's a generic uh, text type. Uh, file that you can easily manipulate. Now we close here. We can go to components overhaul. Components overhaul by default, it will show repairable. If it's serviceable, you can click over here, but by default, it will open, this module will open as a repairable. Now you determine on which aircraft model is used, that component. You can select the system, let's say uh, avionics. Under avionics, I can select, um, I will say magnetron. You select the part number, the serial number, and that's the specific component that you are looking for. Over here in the grid, we can see that this component is repairable, is in green color. You can have a picture of the component in here. That's a magnetron, part number, serial number, national stock number, which is very useful uh, 
with the military forces. They track components not only by part number, but also by national stock number, because that's how they track their components in the uh, in their inventory. We can move to the right again. We click on details and we have an overview, a rundown of all the information related to that particular component. I have a picture here again. You can upload the specific picture for that component and it will be shown over here. By default, you will have the company's logo. Now, let's say you want to see not only a repairable component, but you want to see information about a serviceable component. You click on serviceable, use on this aircraft model, let's say hydraulics, Now you can see all the components you're tracking on your database. I will, I will pick anyone just as an example. I don't have a serial number for that one. I have a part number. I have a serial number. I click on search. And I see all the serviceable components with this particular part number. You see that I'm 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 using I'm using the same serial number for all of them, but it will be shown all the components on your on your in your in your inventory. Not only one, but all of them. So that's pretty handy because in this in this case, the uh, the warehouses or your logistics department they can take a look at any single component you will have on record. Not only the ones that are repairable but also the ones that are serviceable. You can have a rundown of everything and you can download all the components on a spreadsheet. I will not gonna do it because uh, on, this, on this demo, I'm running over 49,000 components that we put together on this on this uh, demo database, but you will be able to do it and 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 put them all in a in a in an Excel spreadsheet if you want to, or any other format if you download them as an XML. Now we go to configuration status accounting. Configuration status accounting helps the operators of mainly military aircraft to track the aircraft life cycle from, from concept and technology development down to operational support, which is phase four. Configuration status accounting is the methodology utilized by military forces to track the whole aircraft, uh, aircraft life, if you will. And it's divided in four main phases. The first one is the concept and technology development. The second one, is the system development. 
and demonstration. Phase three, production and deployment. And phase four, operational support. Let's click on phase one. On phase one, let's say I want to track the uh, life cycle of tail number 004. 004, and it's a, a UA system. Do my search. I want to add data to the calendar. I click over here. We click over here and now we can, we can see the different aspects of phase one that I want to 
update. In this particular case, I click on today's date. Will be tail number 004. Let's say that I did receive the mission needs statements document. I just make a note here, receive mission statement document from contractor. Uh, we requested a contract change to con tractor. or still waiting for system requirements documents. Do they uh, July 23rd, 2022? Just to give an example. And then you click on submit. When you click submit, and you go to tail number 004, you will see the update for today's day. So that's basically how this uh, this calendar works and how that's how you can keep track of, of your of your uh, configuration status accounting data. You close it. You do the same for phase two. Uh, let's say that we're still on aircraft 004. I search, add data to the calendar. Now you see that we have different fields that, that we can add information to. Uh, we are on the same date. Uh, tail number is 004. Uh, engineering drawings need to be red line, for example. You can annotate, you can annotate any, any type of information relevant to phase two. Keep in mind that these headings over here are the headings that are relevant to phase two in accordance with the configuration status accounting methodology. Okay. So what I'm trying to say is that this is this is these are the tasks that you will see in general when you are in under phase two operations of your aircraft life cycle. You need CAD files, test plans, audit certifications, audit reports, audit plans, engineering change proposals, you have a space for it, engineering, or, in, engineering change orders over here, uh, as built verification, request for deviation, NORS, removal and reinstallation. 
let's say that this is the only activity today. Well, I click on submit and it will go to, it says that my uh, submission was successful. Let me go back. We are on 004, phase two. Engineering drawings, engineering needs to be redlined. So that's basically how these this, uh, configuration status accounting modules work. And you can keep track of your aircraft life cycle day in and day out with this, with this module. You don't have to keep track of your life cycle in spreadsheets or any other applications. You just use the database. Close it. Phase three works the same. You go to aircraft 004, which is the specimen that we are, we are uh, using as an example today, add data to the calendar. See that the different fields are different for each phase because you achieve different activities at different phases. We look for aircraft 004. And uh, let's say that uh, training material was received in house. from vendor, from vendor. You click on submit. And once you click on submit, oh, we forgot the date. Today's date. We click on submit. Go back to Aircraft 004, phase three, and here is the information. You can view details if you want to, and you can upload all any kind of documents that you might want. You have a reference standards here that you can use, uh, you know, ECP regulations, you have a, you have a, you can keep your full library in your computer and you can upload it into the cloud by using by using this feature. Let's say you want to upload uh, processes for engineering systems. You click on it, update, go back. And now I have the document available for use. So you don't need that document as a reference standard. You just remove it, update, go back, and it's gone. Then you can upload another one. Let's say you want to use you want to use, uh, you need the, uh, the uh, configuration management standard, 1073-2016, update, view details, and it's right here. You can open it. And you can use this feature to update any type of document that you might need to support your configuration status accounting phase. 
because all four phases, they work the same. You can upload uh, documents that support your activities during that phase. So I will remove it. And phase four works exactly the same. Let's continue with tell number 004. We want to add new data. Uh, we put the date, today's date, the tail number, serial number, uh, production and deployment items. Uh, Items on hand, ready to be used, just to give you an example. Submit, go to tail number, verify that they are already there. View details. Saying you can upload whatever documents you want. And that's how you keep track of your aircraft life cycle. Every single day, day in, day out, you can navigate to any single day, week, or year by clicking on the arrows on top of the, uh, of the calendar. your information will be kept in a single place. Now let's go to a uh, paint scheme. Under paint scheme, we have only one example here. Uh, tail number 001, that's an UACCTL. You can do search. Here is the aircraft. And notice that what we are tracking in this grid is the, uh, the hex color code for the paint. In this case, for the instrument panel, we're gonna paint the instrument panel with hex color one, two, three, four, five, six, which is basically an example. The belly will be this color. If we have two bellies, three belly sections, you can identify each individual section by the hex color, and you can do the same thing for the whole aircraft. You can go throughout the whole fuselage and track all the colors for stabilizer and everything. All the colors related to the, a particular paint scheme by tail number will be reflected here. We click on view details. We put a, we pull a, a color scheme re reference here in case you want to, you want to uh, uh, have a visual identification of the hex color, you can input the hex color over here, and then you will have you have that particular color shown. As a, as, a, as a visual. That's the color for one, two, three, four, five, six in hex uh, standard. 
We have a rundown of all the colors of the aircraft. We have a picture of that particular aircraft. This is very important. So when you send your aircraft to a contractor for, for painting, uh, you can send them a picture on how you want the aircraft to look. And we also, you can also want to show them how your instrument panel will look. And you can upload a picture of your aircraft from your computer. And you can use it later on for, for the, as a reference for your for your uh, for your vendors. If you want to make any changes again, you can you can edit the grid over here. You can change add or remove any colors from your from your aircraft paint scheme. And you can track all your aircraft in one place. Engineering drawings. We have we have only one example here, so engineering drawings. You can upload the uh, this particular drawing. This is uh, UACTL drawing three, and you can upload a picture. It could be a JPEG, could be a PDF, it could be anything. Um, uh, you can upload basically any format into this into this field. And you will do the same, the same thing for each individual engineering drawing. And you can track all the drawings related to any aircraft in the fleet individually. We have another module called e equipment calibration. Equipment calibration, we have a, a part number 43. This is a, a watt meter manufactured by Bird Electronics, very popular in aviation. You can track the, the, the date when you send the aircraft out for calibration, the day it was, cali it was calibrated, the day when you receive it, and you can have a turnaround time. So that will give you an idea on how long, once you send this, air, this uh, equipment out for calibration, how long it will take for you to, to get it back, to return to your facility your maintenance facility. That's, uh, that's something very important that in the old days when I was, uh, when I was uh, part of the workforce, I always was concerned about uh, how long it took the last time a particular equipment, uh, it took from the time I send it out and the time I receive it. So next time I have a better, next year I will have a better, a better planning for when that equipment needs to be sent out. So it will have back on time. Calibration cycle, 12 months. Uh, next calibration. Next calibration is calculated by determining when the aircraft was sent out and when it was received. Uh, 
excuse me, when the aircraft was calibrated and today's date, 182 days from, uh, from today. You can click on view details and you can see an overview of the of that particular equipment. Now let's go to inventory management. In inventory management, you can track all your inventory in one place. Uh, let's say, uh, take a look at a KT-76A transponder. As an avionics component, click on search. And I have, I see that this particular component. has a, uh, an eel economic ordered quantity, which is basically how many units I have to have in inventory in order to prevent a stock up. So this is a very useful, this is a very useful, uh, very useful tool for logistics managers and maintenance personnel to determine how many units I have to have in stock in order to prevent stock up. Stock out is defined as not having the part in stock. Now, in order to achieve this, we utilize different formulas in this grid that will determine the field, the field rate, uh, minimum and maximum inventory, uh, reordering points and, and so forth. And we are using a safety factor in this example of 3.5. Safety factor is a number that goes from zero, in our case, it goes, it goes from zero through four, which allows me to increase the, the accuracy of the inventory I should have in stock of any particular part. For instance, a, a safety factor of 3.5 is better than a safety factor of 2.0 because you are increasing the, uh, the, the probability of not running out of stock. In this, in this database, we are using a safety factor of 3.5. Now, by having a safety factor of 3.5, I make sure I have a field rate of 100. As long as my field rate goes between 95% and 100, as if I'm a logistics manager, I'm in a good shape as far as my inventory goes. Uh, we don't want to run out of parts. And in order to achieve that we are we develop this tool so logistics managers they can track their parts and not run out of stock it's a very useful tool um we can see all the parts if you want to at once I will do a search for the whole inventory. 
And now we have a rundown of the whole inventory, which is grouped by, by categories, by audio, avionics, electrical, electronics, engine, mechanical, satellite, whatever. You determine, you determine those groups if you want to. You click on edit to change the grid. Now you can determine and assign different categories to your different parts. You see this area that is, is shaded? This area is full of formulas that calculate different tasks as related to your inventory. You cannot change these areas. You can only cha change the areas that are not shaded. Like in this portion over here, all the way, all the way to EOQ. Remember, always remember to exit the grid. And now you have uh, you have a, a, a pie chart that depicts based on your part description, how many you have to you have to keep ordering in order to not run out of stock. In this case, we have some screws over here. We have to order 1,892 uh, in order to have enough screws in, in stock so I never run out of parts. So that's basically how this graphics, uh, this pie chart works. Now we can go to, we can track suppliers and vendors. If you have a big operation and you have uh, dozens or maybe hundreds of suppliers, you want to have them all in one place. Uh, I'm using different examples here. I'm tracking the company, the, the last name of my POC. Steve Williams in this case. And then I have uh, information as far as his phone number, uh, mobile phone, job title, email address, the web page of the company that he works for. If, if, if the company has any brochure, you can upload it over here. You can have a, uh, an overview of that particular vendor. That's basically how the, uh, the supplier vendor module works. It's very simple, as you can see, uh, the way we navigate these databases. Uh, you can, if you have to track employee data,
if you want to track employee data, you can track it over here. I'm not related to that person. Uh, I'm using this as an example. Uh, I have uh, two employees here with the same last name. They populate over here. You decide which one you're looking for. Uh, we have a section for to upload a picture of that employee. The first name, job title, employee ID, email address, business phone, home phone, mobile home, fax number, the rate per hour of that particular employee. You wanna see details of that person. You have a detail section on where you can see an overview of that particular individual. Now you want to see the whole workforce at once. You click on all records, select yes. And now you have them all. You have a pie chart on where you have the annual salaries for each one. Uh, you can do you can do uh, pre-planning. You can do this. This module is very useful for human resources department. And you can track the uh, the employee data in this particular section. Keep in mind all these modules, we can add uh, different layers of security because when you are managing uh, personal data, there are some requirements by the government that you have to follow. And, and one of the requirements is to add uh, security layers to protect the employee's data. Also, that can also be controlled through the user rights. In these databases, in our databases, we use as a standard different, uh, up to three different user rights, an administrator, a manager, and a, and a user. The user, We'll, we'll never see this module. Not even the manager, only administrators can see this page. So this completes the, uh, the navigation of Mars 100R aircraft configuration management database. Like I said, this database does much more than configuration management. It could be a great tool for a, uh, to run the whole operations of an aircraft facility. I hope you like it. Have a nice day. Bye.